and welcome to Epiphytic Cacti. Today I figured we'd do something a little bit different because I'm kind of getting tired of like bloom after bloom after bloom. It's kind of exhausting. <laughs> so I figured we'd actually look at some of the really cool things going on with the plants around the house, in the basement, from upstairs, um, in the bio herbs. So we just look at some cool plants today. That's especially because I think that a lot of times people will think that epiphytic cacti, because they're cacti, they grow very slowly, or they only grow in the summertime. Not true. There are a lot of epiphytic cacti that grow in the fall and throughout the winter. What we have in front of us right now is actually another one of my favorite. I kind of think that everything is my favorite at this point, but another one of my favorite genus, which would be Daiso cactus. These guys are so cool. The one that we have in front of us is actually not a species. It's not a true species. It's actually a cross between two species. Um, I picked this up just kind of at random because I thought it was interesting and it is, oh, it is interesting. The thing is constantly exploding in growth and it grows extremely fast. This little guy was actually just kind of started from a few little cuttings that were thrown in this pot because I think I broke some off of the, the mother plant. So yes, I have a larger plant of this downstairs, but I also have this little guy and I just think it's cool because it's just exploding in growth. A lot of the Daiso cactus throw out these long sort of round, I like to call them canes, but they're really just rounded branches. That's all it really is. And then they'll actually grow out like tons and tons and tons of new branches from those branches. Sometimes they'll be flat, sometimes they'll be more round. It's just kind of random. And because these were used so much in hybridizing, particularly in your, you know, quote unquote epiphyllum hybrids, a lot of times you'll end up with hybrids that show these crazy traits. Let's kind of look at this guy a little bit closer just so you can see all of this explosion of growth. You can see all this crazy explosion of all these new little branches coming out everywhere and the long round cane. Here's an example of another little one. This one I got not so long ago and this one is a true species. This one is actually Daiso cactus by Formis. And you can see the same thing. It's very young and it's got all these new shoots just coming out and check this out. All of the new growth that's coming off of this single branch. They are just that cool. Look at how crazy that little bundle of growth is coming out of next to nothing here. It's just like, Burr. and not all Daiso cactus do this, but there's a fair number that do actually grow this way. So now what I'm going to show is an epiphyllum hybrid that, you know, quote unquote epiphyllum hybrid that has Daiso cactus in its lineage. And one of the things that you'll see them do when they have Daiso cactus in their lineage, particularly one of the style that I just showed you that grows those long rounded canes with like massive offshoots of growth. You can see that this, like a lot of your standard hybrids, it's got this long, you know, kind of flat branch that's going on here. But then you start to see some kind of odd things like this. It's very rounded at the base and then it kind of branches out, which that seems a little bit different for your standard epiphyllum hybrid. And then you'll sometimes see things like this. This is a telltale sign that this is a Daiso cactus hybrid. Isn't that just cool? Or then it really has Daiso cactus somewhere in its lineage. I really love that kind of thing. And sometimes they still throw out like those completely rounded kind of canes. Just fantastic. And they grow so fast. So this is another little Daiso cactus species, and you can see it was just like a couple of cuttings that I just tossed in this little black pot, and it is just exploding, and you can already see that it's shooting off one of those little round canes, and it's kind of branching out very quickly and very actively growing right now. I did um, a spotlight video on Weberosirius radii earlier this year, and this may be one of the newer kind of larger ones that I got. And I just wanted to show that all of the Weber Osiris species that I have down in the basement are all actively growing right now. So I just wanted to show, you know, I was putting out this beautiful, beautiful new clade. So gorgeous, I love it. Here's kind of an odd duck. This plant is really common. This is not a hard plant to get. 
I think this plant is really cool though. It's kind of like the heavy metal rocker of plants, you know, it is kind of what I think of when I think of these guys. They're, they're just really kind of neat. And if you're into kind of extreme plants, I would definitely say that Selenocereus is probably your bag. I don't have many Selenocereus. I have a few, but I don't really totally actively collect them. But this is Selenocereus inermis. Now, this guy actually used to go by the name Selenocereus, and let's hope I say this right, but I probably won't work the eye. It is still sold quite often by that name. It is a very fast grower and it is very actively growing right now. So, I mean, he's very extreme. They'll get like very long, very beautiful, like hanging sort of bushy planted. It looks like snakes, really. It's really kind of an insane thing. In my opinion, that plant deck has probably one of the more striking Selenocereus flowers because it is not just pure white. It has some green and some pink in it, so it's a little bit more interesting. I showed these guys kind of earlier, but I kind of wanted to highlight this again because it's just that crazy. So I had purchased these earlier this year, and let's hope that I can find a photograph so I can put that in there. And you can see how much this thing has grown between then and now it being grafted. And this is Schlumbergera microsephirica. So super crazy. I have a few of these. And what I will say is that <laughs> the ones that I have just kind of growing on their own root systems, they were planted long before I ever got these. And they're kind of sad looking, but they're growing in their own root system. Whereas this guy is growing so massively and crazy like this because he's grafted. But I just wanted to show that because I just think it is super crazy as to how much that thing has actually grown. And at the same time, I purchased this guy. And this is a graft. This is a graft of, um, I believe it's a, it's a hybrid. It is Schlumbergera Aiko. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. It's I-K-O though. And you can see that I got this at the same time and it's not growing anywhere near in like the same way as Microsphirica. I truly think that Microsphirica just really likes to be grafted, particularly on Perscariopsis. So it's growing actively. They both were growing totally actively right now. And, you know, it's just kind of interesting to see how, how much they've grown. And I think that one of the things that I think is so crazy about this guy in particular is look at these clades. Look at how weird. Like, I was looking at this earlier and I was like, man, this thing is really crazy. So see how this guy is like almost completely rounded. He's just got a few angles. This is like three angled and kind of twisted. And then if we go over here, you see this kind of crazy throwback? It's interesting because they're completely flat kind of clades. These are the Apontioides hybrids. So I just think that it's interesting to see that many different clade shapes just on one hybrid. And it's just super cool, but very actively growing right now. This is actually the graph that I did earlier that it's, there's a video on it. It's called stab grafting and it's a joke. I don't know what it's actually called. I just call it stab grafting because I couldn't think of a better name. But this was an a porocactus species. Now a porocactus, at least for me anyway, they do tend to grow pretty slowly. And so this is how much growth this guy has put on, which is actually pretty magnificent considering the cutting is just barely doing anything. A porocactus species, they're tough. They're tough to root and they're tough not to rot and stuff. And they, they do grow kind of slowly. You'll see I've got this in kind of an odd setup here. I have in a little net basket and you can see all those roots that are going on in there. They're just like coming out and then they're kind of diving down into that water. See a little root down there. And he's just kind of surviving that way. Eh, I did it because I figured that he'd have a better chance growing like that, particularly because it would be very hard to root him when I got him. So you can see he is just now trying to form some kind of new little growth and just that one new little growth there. Maybe there's a second one. There you go. You see how tiny that is. 
And so you can see how impressive the graft actually is. <laughs> it doesn't seem that impressive, but it, it really is kind of that impressive. So I'm, I'm happy to see that that thing is growing because it's a pretty special uh, plant. I want to take a moment here to also give an extreme shout out to this book, The New Cactus Lexicon. And you can see it says illustrations. And by illustrations, it's more like full on just photographs. It's full photographs of pretty much like all cactus up to the time that this book was written. This was published in 2013. Some of the genus have kind of changed a little bit and stuff, but it doesn't really matter because they're full on gorgeous, beautiful pictures. And if you can find this book, I highly recommend purchasing it if you are super interested in species. So I could not find this in the United States. And the only place that I could find this from was Cactine Hage in Germany. So I ordered this from Cactine Hage. I am really, really super glad that I did. It's a book that comes with a, a kind of an expense. It's, it's expensive because it's out of print. So if you can find it, best, best book on cacti species, hands down. So this is not the most exceptional ripsalis you've ever seen, I'm sure. It's not my most exceptional ripsalis, but this is cuttings of ripsalis paradoxa. I was poking around the other day and I was like, oh snap, he's growing. And so I got really excited when I saw these new little growths. And then today when I pulled him out, I was like, whoa, wait a second, he was really growing. I didn't realize that he had like three new branches coming out. And I was excited about this because I knew that this is one of the harder ripsalis to start. So that was really exciting. And I will say that, you know, while this ripsalis is like, you know, new growth is all cute and stuff here and rather small, all of my ripsalis upstairs are actively growing right now. Back to the new cactus lexicon. If you're anything like me and you have a really, really, really difficult time identifying ripsalis, it has the most beautiful full color photographs of the plants and usually the flowers of all of the ripsalis. So if you have a tough time identifying them, that book will really, really help. So this guy right here is Phyphra monacantha, subspecies monacantha. And it is actively growing right now. But the reason why I'm showing this plant is because I want to show another plant. You can see that there are spines all along the aerials of each one of these branches. So they're, they're, they're pretty good sized spines. They're pretty aggressive and they hurt when they get a hold of you. But I was lucky enough to find this guy earlier this year. And I was so excited when I saw him because it, it was kind of a thing where like the person had the flower and I was just kind of perusing around. And if you, if you don't know, this guy has these gorgeous little orange flowers. They're just, I love orange flowers and little orange flowers are like the best flowers. Well, they're not the best, but they're, I really like them a lot. <laughs> what had happened was, is I was kind of perusing around and I saw this guy and then I saw the little orange flowers and I was like, wait, what? I did like a quadruple take because I was like, wait a second that's the one that doesn't have spines. So this is Phyphra monocantha subspecies Camnachia. You can see all along the margins, there's no spines. And you can also see that it has, a, the, the branches have a little bit of a different appearance. Their lobes are much more prominent in their branches, these curved parts here. They're much more prominent, giving it a very elegant look. Plus the growth pattern is a little bit different and really cool. So see how it's got all this new growth that's popping out like this? It will grow these big, long, beautiful branches, like in, you know, these, out of a lot of the aerials here, and it'll just hang down so gorgeous. So I was so excited and so happy to get this plant. And I've done a video on her store before. I don't think that she's shipping right now because it's too cold um, where she lives, I think, to ship out. But you can check out the video on her store and keep in mind of this one because I've literally never seen this particular species anywhere else. It was the Facebook store Karma's Plants and Seed Shop where this came from, so super cool. 
And Aaron just wanted to point out my arch nemesis here. <laughs> so this would be Schlumbergera lutea subspecies bradii. Now I've done several videos on this plant and how difficult it actually has been. But I do want to say the experiment that I did, let me pull this down. The experiment that I did on this guy where it is being grown in this pot, let me see if I can even get this guy out. You can see what's going on here. It's just kind of in this Tupperware with the wicking system and then the net pot and then there's geolite in there. Um, but I want to show that it is now very actively growing. So you can see all these new little clades that are popping out everywhere. So he's doing really well and all of them are. So this one was put in the geolite. There's another one that was put in hydrogen. I'll grab him really fast too. There you go. So there's the ones that were put in hydrogen and you can see that they are also putting out all these new little growths. You can see how oh, so exciting. I didn't kill it. <laughs> So I will say that this guy that's growing in the bi-orb here, he's really not actively growing the way that the other ones are that are put in the geolite and the hydroton like that. So he's just kind of hanging out there not really doing that much. He's turning kind of a red though. And the reason why is because there's that ring of grow lights that are in there. So I just wanted to point out down here. So right there is a, one of the, the little starts of microspherica that I got that I put inside of this bi-orb. And it is also actively growing. I mean, obviously it doesn't look anywhere near as incredible as the graphs, but it's actively growing on its own root system in sphagnum moss in this little net pot. So that's pretty cool. So I thought for sure this guy was a goner because he had a couple of um, branches on him and they fell off. Like he had gotten too much water and they just fell off. And I assumed the main, <laughs> the main branch was just eventually going to die. And what this is, Hattoria hermine. I don't know if I said that right, and I'm sure I didn't. I'm sure I botched it, but at least I tried. And you can see it's got this little tiny new little branch that just like started popping out. So that was pretty exciting. I really thought he was going to die. Here's the other one that is in the other bio orb. And one thing that I don't believe that you can see it, but I can see them, they're very small. What I see is that this guy is also starting to form new little branches. So they're also actively growing right now, which is really exciting. That, that's super cool. Um, and then back here is, you can see that guy right there. That is another clone of Microspherica, and you can see it's also actively growing, although it doesn't look anywhere near as impressive, of course, as the grafted one. So I had placed an order from another nursery in Germany, Ulig Cactine. What, one of the reasons why I had ordered from there had something to do with some of the species that they had. So this right here is really kind of a confusing dude because the tag says that this is Dysocactus shrankii uh, variety stenopetalum. And I'm, I'm really not sure because, you know, I can't really find anything that's all that comparable with the growth on this and, and all that stuff, especially because like some of these, uh, they look like they're four angled, but then like some of them are different and it doesn't really I'm gonna say that this is one of those things I'm sure that this is a species etc 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 but here's the thing when I got this plant I was so excited I wasn't excited because of what species I thought it was or wasn't I actually didn't know what it even looked like when I you know purchased it it was one of those things where I was like oh you know I just want all the daiso cactus they have because I was kind of collecting daiso cactus knowing that the name was not truly accurate and so it came and when I opened up the package I was just so freaking excited because I love the way this plant looks I just think that it is super cool super amazing looking plant and at the end of the day, I think that's all that really matters. I know that a lot of the, a lot of people comment, you know, oh, like, wow, you know their names. I don't really think it's all that important. I mean, it is if you're, 
you know, working in a conservatory or something like that. I mean, if you're, if you're a botanist, it might actually matter. But I think that for a lot of people, if you're just a hobbyist, an average home grower type situation, it's perfectly okay not to know their names because really you're just having a plant just for your own personal enjoyment. And even though I have tons and tons of plants, I'm not a botanist. I just have a lot of plants because I collect them and I enjoy them. I enjoy this plant very much. Happy holidays and stay safe. I hope that you've enjoyed today's video. Thank you for watching and happy cacti growing.